how would you feel if you found out that the moment that your son or daughter arrived at school, they were met by bullies who threatened them, threw them into lockers, humiliated them in front of others, and turned their lives into a living hell? You're going to hear from young teens who say that they feel suicidal because of all the abuse that they've suffered at the hands of a bully who won't leave them alone. Today, the teens are going to come face to face with their tormentors and find out why they're trying to ruin their lives. This boy gets bullied because he's overweight. I can't change the locker room, so I have to go in the bathroom because the teachers say, they say, I have big breasts, and I, and they say, oh. well, You wrote to me because you say you are the loneliest boy in school. Why? because I don't have any friends. None? <laughs> and he has one special wish. Always wanted a tread, treadmill. But I... What would you do with a treadmill, honey? Exercise and lose weight. Oh, you believe the commercials, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so today, I'm going to make his dream come true. One, two, three. This girl says her best friend became her worst nightmare when she turned into a bully. It makes me feel sad and that I'm not wanted. And I don't know what to do. I don't want to be your friend. I stayed away from right. you, and that's all I need to do. You're not a friend. Then how come you keep coming over to our table and tormenting me, Crystal? I don't do anything to yes, you. Yes, you do. She and her mom are here to confront the bully and her mom. You're telling me to stay out of it. Why don't you stay out of it? You just said let them talk. Why don't you back off? And mom is going to face her own bully after 23 years. Something horrible happened the last time you saw her? The last time I saw her, her and three other girls beat the hell out of me. How do you feel about seeing her? Scared. I'm shaky. I feel like I'm a teenager again. Carla is here today because she says she's being bullied in school by a 15-year-old girl named Samantha, who has threatened, humiliated, and even encouraged other girls to beat Carla up. Have you been beaten up, Carla? Yes, I got beat up the wall and banged up against the locker. I had put down in the snow. They cover me, and I nearly choked on the snow. <laughs> the bullying is pretty serious stuff because it's actually made Carla feel suicidal. Why, Carla? Because in the mornings I tried waking up because I got to go to school to listen to it. School's a nightmare then, right? <laughs> and, and the last thing in the world you want to do. How did the bullying begin? When I first got there, I got into a fight. And it happened to be one of Samantha's friends. After that, she got everybody against me. And they pick on me, they call me names. So, so going to school every day is a nightmare. Do you cut school a lot? Yeah, just some mornings when I wake up, I go. Like, instead of going to school, I would go down to my aunt's house and stay there until it's come to, time to come home. What has this done to you emotionally? Every day, I'm sick. I got headaches. I dread, like, going to school. I get mom to come pick me up sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, like, it, if I go home, it causes arguments. So my father brings me back, and I got to listen to it again. And I end up skipping out of school. Like, I'll go to the bathroom and stay there. Mm -hmm. And you've even written a poem on what's going on inside you. Would you like to read it to us? It's called, I Wish You Were Me. I wish I could never see the world that was meant for me. This yelling and fighting will never end. And it's all because of my family and friends. 
This pain that I feel inside, the hurt and the anger, I'll always hide. I often wonder what I should do with my life. Should I kill myself with a gun or should I do it with a knife? I know this sounds stupid to you, but you don't know what I'm going through. I wish I were you and you were me when I'm called a slut or even a bee. It hurts to know that there's nobody there, especially when you need the love and care. The, um, why, Carla, did you want us to bring Samantha here? I want to ask her why pick at me. Why you? Is that right? In other words, what did you do to her that she is taking this out on you, all right? So let's bring Samantha out and hear what Samantha has to say. <laughs> Samantha, you hear what everybody, everybody is, uh, is extremely upset. Now, you admit that you are bullying Carla, right? Why? Cause I just don't like her. She goes around, says everything like beyond people's back. And... Is that true? Is that the reason why you bully her? Because she does that? And because I just don't like her. Why do you not like her? Cause she's like, hmm? she tells lies. Like she goes around, and thinks she's right big when she's like, she stays in the bathroom all day in school. Like <laughs> Samantha, one of our producers. Uh, had an experience with you, right? Nikki? Nikki, come on over and tell me about it. Tell us what happened. If anyone here has any doubts as to whether this girl is a bully, let me tell you something. I called her up to try to book her for this show. And she said to me, I'm going to take a knife and stick it up your throat. So if, if she could be that terrible, if she could be that terrible to someone who she doesn't even know, could you imagine what she does to these girls at school? Why would you do that to someone you didn't know? Because I thought it was a prank call. You thought it was a friend? I thought it was a prank call. Like... A prank? Yeah. Uh, can you describe the kinds of things that you do to Samantha? Carla. I mean, to Carla. Sorry. Nothing. I'll just, like, probably go up to her and call her a slut or something or just push her up. Okay. And you push her. Tell me why you don't care. You're making somebody dread school, and she says that her life is a living hell, and there's big fights in the family about this, and she feels suicidal. Why do you not care? What's going through your mind? Really nothing. It's like, but why pick on me? I never did anything to you, and I don't go around saying stuff about you. That's first of all. We all know. Okay. So there is nothing that would make you let up on her. As long as you can make her life miserable, make her very suicidal, make her terribly unhappy, you're going to continue doing that. You should is see that correct? My, you should see my family, what you're doing to us. You're destroying my health and my family's health. Yeah. Do, you you care? Care? Do you care? No. Do you care? No. Go ahead. Okay, this is for Samantha. I'd like to tell you if you was really real, you wouldn't have to get your friends to bully her. You would do it to I can't change in the in the bathroom because I can't change in the locker room, so I have to go in the bathroom because the teachers say they say I have big breasts. And always wanted a tread treadmill, but I. What would you do with the treadmill, Adam? Exercise and lose weight. Oh, you believe the commercials, huh? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Can I get a smile 
front of you a little bit. My next guest is 12 years old, but he has been through quite a lot. He was born in Poland. Do you speak Polish? And lived in uh, the Soviet Union. And he lived through the Chernobyl disaster. The Because of the problems there, Adam has permanent hearing loss. Now, his parents brought him to America in search of a better life. But life has not been too much better for this young man. This is a letter that he sent to us. Dear Mrs. Raphael, my name is Adam and I'm 12 years old. I'm writing this letter to you because I weigh 150 pounds and I desperately need help. I have been planning to run away and I did, but only for two days. I ran away because I can't take it anymore in school. They call me fat so, fat ass, broken chair and farting machine and many more names. When I come home, my brother makes fun of me and teases me. So it's like a circle in school and at home. My parents are helpless and so am I. I tried going on a diet, but any time my, my mother cooks a meal, I just can't help it and I eat. I don't know why, Mrs. Raphael. I'm sorry to say that neither I nor my parents can afford a ticket to New York if you decide to talk to me and help me. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes to read my letter. Sincerely, Adam Kotas. a pretty good letter. Pretty good letter. We didn't want Adam to worry about uh, paying for his plane ticket, so we gave him a plane ticket. Adam's parents don't speak English. They are very hardworking people who, uh, they were afraid to take one day off from their jobs to come here. So we sent a member of our staff to pick up Adam and personally escort Adam to the show. You told us that your problems began when your mother left Poland to come to America. Did she go on ahead of you? Yes, she did, one year. Okay, so mother is coming to America. Who are you with? My grandma. And what happened? Um, well, she always cooks a lot of food and... Is grandmother Polish? Yes. Does she cook? A lot of food. She said, oh, Adam, eat, eat. And, you know, because I was so afraid and everything, I was missing my mom. And so she said, just, and so I was keep, keep on eating. So I was eating. And she said, oh, I Adam, understand. you're growing, you're growing. <laughs> you were growing the wrong way, huh? In other words, you missed mother. Mother's in America. Grandmother is saying, come, mange. Essen, whatever word it is, it means let's fatten him up there because he won't feel so bad. So, you have been here in the States for four years. And you say that's when all the bullying began. Can you tell me what the kids do to you? Well, I can't change in the, in the bathroom because I can't change in the locker room, so I have to go in the bathroom because the teachers say, they say, I have big breasts and I. And they say, go, go to, go to, go to the, go to the girls' locker room. So the teachers just, the teachers just make me change in the bathroom. Teachers make you change in the bathroom? <laughs> they make me because I wanted to. Adam, do they do that because they don't want you to be bullied? And how does it make you feel when they call you those names? Worthless. Worthless. This one died. Now you brought your school picture for me. Mm -hmm. You wrote on it, you can see, Sally, my big breasts. This kid didn't want to sit next to me, but the photographer made him. Mm -hmm. Are they teasing you because you're Polish? Are they teasing you because you lived in Russia? Or are they teasing you because they think you're chubby? Think that I'm chubby. Well, they're, 
kids in school are, are Polish, are Russian, and uh, all different races. So They're you know, all different kinds. They're Mexicans for the weekend. They are. That's good. That's a good school. But not if they're teasing you, right? You don't think it's a good school. What do you do when the kids pick on you? Try to fight back, but when there are, if they're in a group, I, you can't fight back because when you fight back, all of them are going to get on you. But when you meet with one of them, there you can fight back. And then they send you to the, then they send you to the principal's office, and the principal office, the, prin the principal thinks that it's your fault. Now, you wrote to me because you say you are the loneliest boy in school. Aww. Why? Because I don't have any friends. None? Not one other? Come on now, Adam. We're going to tough this out here. Adam cries in his bed and, and even tried to run away. But what does this do to your parents when you run away, Adam? That's why I don't run away anymore. Because it's bad for your parents, right? Yes. Do you ever shut your eyes and fantasize about how you would like things to be? Yeah, I always wanted a tread treadmill. But I... What would you do with a treadmill, Adam? Exercise and lose weight. Oh, you believe the commercials, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Adam, you have to get on the treadmill. When you thought about coming to America, what did you think it would be like when you came here? Well, everybody thinks it's a dream. That America is a dream. Everybody wants to be here. And what kind of dream did you think it was going to be? I get a lot of money. Okay. And what else? Have everything. Have everything. And what else? Lots um, of friends? Well, I had friends in Poland, so I didn't kind of think that it wouldn't matter that I would have friends here, too. But I wasn't here. I mostly gained weight here in America, not in Poland. Are you disappointed in us, Adam? In who? In Americans. No, not in you all, or just in the kids. We'll be right back. It makes me feel sad and that I'm not wanted. And I don't know what to do. I don't have nothing to do with you. I don't want to hang around you. I don't want to be your friend. I've stayed away Good. from you, and that's all I need. You're not a friend. Then how come you keep coming over to our table and tormenting me, Crystal? I don't do anything yes, to you. Yes, you do. Ever. And I will do whatever I have to on this earth to protect her from verbal, physical, or mental abuse from anybody. You're telling me to stay out of it. Why don't you stay out of it? You just said let them talk. Why don't you back off? This is 13-year-old uh, Jackie, and this is her mom, Judy. Actually, Judy's the one who called our show because she said that uh, she was, uh, could no longer stand by, are these your words, and yes. watch your daughter get bullied day in and day out? I can't stand seeing... By a girl named Crystal. Right. I can't stand seeing her go through what I went through as a child. This girl torments my daughter. Uh, and you wanted to settle this. Um, she used to be a very good friend of Jackie's. This Crystal. Crystal. She's how old? She's 14. When did you first realize that Jackie was being bullied at school? Well, she was being bullied last year. Okay. And then it started with Crystal again this year. She'd go to school, she'd come home, and she'd cry at least once a week when she comes home. Okay. And I'd hold her. I'd take her in my room. I'd hold her. And I'd tell her that we're there for her. Right. And we love her. She tried to kill herself. She uh, is told by Crystal she doesn't bathe, she doesn't brush her hair, that she smells. I've spoken to Crystal. Crystal has tormented my daughter to a point where I'm ready to yank her from school. I've been to the principal, the vice principal, the board of education. 
I have two police reports on Crystal. So you've done all of the things that a parent should do. Have you spoken to Crystal's mother? Yes, I've spoken to Debbie. And? Debbie claims that Crystal's an angel, that her daughter wouldn't do this. And I said, even my daughter's not an angel. We all make mistakes. Now, uh, Jackie, you told us that you and Crystal used to be friends. Yeah. And then she turned on you. What happened? I don't know. One day, um, I was at school, and she came up to me and said that I didn't take a bath, and I didn't shower, and I didn't brush my hair, and, and she called me a bitch, and a whore, and a slut. And I hope, and she tells all her friends that that I don't take a shower and I don't brush my hair. And How does that make you feel? It makes me feel sad and that I'm not wanted, and I don't know what to do. Now you said something about you. This has triggered something in you because you went through this. Yes, I did. About 23, maybe 24 years ago, there was a girl named Allison who uh, we went to school together, we were best friends. Her, and I don't know why, that's what I'd love to know if I ever saw her again was why. She and four other girls beat the hell out of me. But then I always get hurt. And I'm scared, I do, she can't live like this. She cannot repeat history. I want it to stop now for her. <laughs> Let us bring out Crystal, who's 14, and her mother, Debbie, and ask what they think is going on. You have to be quiet and listen to it for a minute, OK? <laughs> Hold on, everybody. <laughs> Let me get, hello. Let me get this straight. You told our producers you do not feel that you are bullying mm -hmm. Jackie, right? Yes. Uh, you tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. Those are your words. Can you explain that to us? Um, I admitted that I've called her a crybaby, or not a crybaby, um, that she doesn't take a shower because she has spent the whole weekend at my house and she didn't take a shower the whole time she was there. No, she, I no, didn't take I, a shower. Don't talk. OK, just let her um. talk. All right, go ahead. Um, she wouldn't bring her toothbrush, so she didn't brush her teeth. Um, I don't know if she takes a shower every day of the week. Crystal, did not, she know she was I'm not talking to you right now. Excuse I'm me. I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go did she know she was spending the whole weekend with you, Crystal? Yes, she did. She did? Yes, she did. Okay, no. go ahead. So you right, knew right. you were spending the weekend with me Crystal. sometimes, right, Crystal? Yes. No, you didn't. Yes, not didn't. guaranteed. And you didn't bring my, my own either. Yes, I did. And I would bring my own This. You do not feel that you are in any way bullying her in um, school? I'm not bullying her, but I have teased her. Okay. Um, I haven't hit her. I haven't Sorry. hit her. I have not hit her at all. And her. there is no two police reports. Police have not called my house. They have not came to my house. Do okay. you? Want to start? Yeah, I don't do you? I have nothing to say. I have Crystal, nothing to say like to you either. Her. You have no respect for any oh, adults. Yeah? You have none. You don't even have respect for when yourself, she respect. and you wouldn't she take it out of my Like Hello? Her. Is her mother overreacting? Yes, to this? most definitely. Oh. How are they? If they can't handle so working did, out at high school, grade admit, school, why did you let me finish talking to you? Go ahead. If they can't work out a situation in grade school, a girl fight, a typical girl fight, what are they going to do when a boss gets in their face? They're told to do something. They're adults in four years. They so, got to learn to start hatching things out on their own. It's okay. If it was, to call if, it, for these if there was drugs involved, if there was physical hurt, hospitalization, yes, mental, the parent gets involved. Mental hurt is worse than physical, Debbie. Yeah. Every day, every day, you get up. You gotta learn to take a little emotion, a physical, whether good or bad, to deal with. And make sure a round person. Oh, make sure a round period in your heart. 
that okay. pain that you feel you from these you words like that are being said. Right? Right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, Jackie, have you, you not written on your right, desk that right. you wanted Hold. to die, you wanted to live with your father? Hold. Why? Because Tell your daughter the truth. is you know the truth. my daughter. You know I like you, kid. Um, okay, I let me... I always have care and for you. That's when I was mad at my mom. Uh, have, why did you bring you up have, last year? I, have, I didn't know yeah, your daughter didn't last, know you last year. Was you last year, Crystal? Crystal? We didn't know you last year. Judy, is it possible that you have merged your teenage experience with your daughter? Is it possible that you are overreacting in that what happened to you Sure, I could be over. In other words, you're saying to her, someday you'll get bullied and this will affect us both, or... No, I'm not no. telling her that she's going to end up like me. Okay. I'm not saying that. And I, yes, I could be overreacting. We don't But put... I love my daughter. Right. And these But maybe you're hearts. a little too... If I'm overprotective, then so be it, Sally. If I'm overprotective, it's because I love her. And right. I love my son, right. and I right. love my husband. Right. Okay. That's my family. Okay. And I will do whatever I have to on this earth to protect her from verbal, physical, or mental abuse from anybody. I thought this was settled until yeah, we you thought it was all settled. You two were friends. Could it be settled? We I thought, thought it was settled two weeks ago. The principal mm -hmm. said... That it wasn't two weeks ago. Principal, a week and a half, the I don't know. The day before spring break. Well, yeah, it'd be settled during spring break because you weren't seeing each no, other. No, they all agreed in the office, the principal. I had no. to call the principal no. before I left yesterday, come out here, to let him know he's prepared that what she had started again. Because the girls I had all again. settled. Your daughter started it. No, Debbie. it was all settled in the office before spring break. The girls all shook hands. They agreed it was over. No. Let's have a good spring no. break. Then why did no. I we got to take my daughter no. out of your daughter's class? At we least. did the one day after they were fighting. Hello. One day. Why no, not eating? one day. This one has been day. going on for months, Debbie. No, it why hasn't. Hasn't. no it hasn't. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. She was over at my house the weekend before. We have been on the phone. You know, I'm at least hearing that somebody at school is working to solve the problem, which is more than I'm hearing with our friends from Canada. I don't have nothing to do with you. I don't want to hang around you. I don't want to be your friend. I've stayed away Good. from you, and that's all I've made. You're not a friend. Then how come you keep coming over to our table and tormenting me, Crystal? I don't do anything yes, to you. Yes, you do. Ever. Oh, and you had hundreds of friends. No one that I'm friends with cannot stand you. And when I was friends with you, they're all, don't be her friends. She can't stand my Jackie for a lot, Jackie. You're forgetting that. Crystal, she doesn't take a shower. Don't be her friend. I'm all good. How many times did Crystal get dogs? And I said, dogs. We're standing up for you, Jackie. I said, a lot. I said just because you guys don't know it's true. Crystal. I said just because you guys don't like her, that doesn't mean I'm gonna hate her. She did. Maybe she's a true stay friend. Out of it. No, it's true. I she said, stood by her You're telling me to stay out of it. Why don't you stay out of it? You just said let them talk. Why don't you back off? I am. You're sitting there coaching me, John Ryan. That's why I'm here. I gotta go to this extreme. Come all the way to New York City. On TV, Sign to make sure that my daughter's going to be safe from your daughter no. and her, her friends, mm. her so-called friends. No one else, she doesn't have friends, friends your that father, are your No one likes her. her. No, no, I'm not glad because they're not people I want her to be friends with. They're not friends. I'm sorry. I apologize. We'll be right back. Something horrible happens the last time you saw her? The last time I saw her... Her, her sister, and three other girls beat the hell out of me. I feel like I'm a teenager again. I hope it's good. We've been talking to teens who say their lives are being ruined by a bully who won't leave them alone. Uh, very hard if you're not there in school, and even if you are there in school, I assume for an educator, it's hard to know whether the child is being indeed bullied, and some get bullied to a, a fairly well, like you were, and then some, it's just something they have to learn to cope with. I can't answer that about Crystal and Jackie. Um, but you said oh. it has changed, your, the fact you were bullied has changed your whole life. In my opinion, And no. you said you really don't trust anybody. You trust your family, but you don't trust anybody. I don't. And that watching your daughter go through this is flashback time yeah. for painful memories. Uh, take us back 23 years. 23 years ago, yeah. High school. When you're young and you want to be popular, you want to have a good time. I had a, fr I had a few friends. Allison and her were some of them, and there were other girls. We went to a Catholic school. We'd um, goof off together. We'd bowl together or whatever. You know, we'd have a good time. We were friends. And then 
at school, somebody told me I was an ARC because my uncle was in the police department. And I said, no. And it just kept escalating. And Allison was like, like headed. a rumor mill that would right. start. Right. It's okay. just stirred and bubbled. Now, until that thing happened with somebody putting the drugs in the locker and it being discovered, you still were very close to Allison, right? Mm, we started or had fading it started apart. You started because, before that to yeah, fade Yeah, because someone had been telling the principal that Allison and, and her and not just her sister, but other kids in the school were doing drugs. And it wasn't me. And they thought it was me. And I wasn't telling anybody. I wasn't, you know, I just wanted to be their friend. Now, the last, something horrible happens the last time you saw her? The last time I saw her, her and three other girls beat the hell out of me. Where? Cumberland Park. It was right next to the public swimming pool we went to. Why would they beat you up? I don't know. You still do not know? I don't know. And you... if I did know, I don't remember. I've blocked it because I had a nervous breakdown after that. From the beating? From the beating. Were you cleared at the school or did these things... No, I ended up leaving the school and going to a public school to finish my education. How do you feel about seeing her? Scared. I'm shaky. I feel like I'm a teenager again. Wondering. Because I remember even seeing her walking on the street, I'd start shaking and I'd go the other way and hide. So I was afraid she'd beat me again. But 23 Three years. years have gone. I'm a grown woman. I'm a mom. I'm just a mom. How can you be afraid of somebody at this stage of your life? Because that's how much she mentally hurt me so deeply in my heart. Do you think she knows that? I don't know. But if she's here, I'm going to ask her. I want to ask her why and what happened. She was my friend. We did. We slept at each other's homes. We, we exchanged clothes. Uh, we, we were there for each other. Went to the same school. I don't know why. I want to know why. You don't think she put the drugs in the locker? I don't know who did. At that time, yes, I believed it. You believed it then. Do you believe it now? No. Hardly likely she'd come if she's the one who did it, right? This is true. <laughs> okay. Let's bring Allison out. Let's find out what grown-ups do when this happens. You've been listening to Judy backstage. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised by what she said? Yeah, yes, yes. Have you any idea over the 23 years? No, I had no idea. None. That she ever. Zippo, none. Ever saw me. What about the beating, though? Do you remember that at Cumberland? Oh, yeah, but oh, you have no idea. Remember when I you faced... told me I couldn't turn left? If I went to the police department, you'd kill me? I, did... did you know when I turned right, my doctor was at the other side, and that's where I went? <laughs> well, that's what I had heard you went. Yeah. But uh, no, I didn't tell you I would kill you. I would never. I had no idea that you looked at me like that. And when I was I looked contacted. Up to you, how could you? <laughs> because you were the no, most I mean, popular girl in school. You were beautiful. Oh, I thank you. But I never saw myself that way, really. I did. Can we put this to rest if you have some time together to talk about it? Can yeah. we? Yeah. Well, Can you I put could, it to I, rest? I feel terrible that you so thought I, that way. That you got kicked out. Oh, we'll be right back. Okay, now ready? One, two, three. Please uh, welcome Darren Lopez. Darren has created an innovative program called Bully Smart. <clears throat> Teaches children how to deal with bullies. Just about ready to get started, right? Yes. All yes. over the country. Okay, sir, you've got some real problems here. Um, I'd like to start with Carla. Uh, Samantha and her mother have left, gone away out into the streets in New York. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> If I were her, I would be pretty nervous about going back home. 
Well, first off, though, you don't want to be the target of a bully. Just like, you know, she's the target of your bullying, you're the target of other people's bullying. Yeah. The number one thing you can do that is to have confident body language. But it's, it's hard to be confident in yourself when everybody's calling yeah, you names. Carla, look at your body language. Okay, don't move. Stop. Tell me what her body language looks like. Well, it looks like to me she's kind of not very comfortable with herself, that she has very low self-image of herself. Now, what are we going to do about the posture that I'm seeing with uh, Jackie and with Carla? Hmm? First off, try sitting back with your shoulders up, both Can of you. Can we both practice that? Well, yeah, come on, sit back. That's all shoulders. three of you. Don't crush your arms. Come on. Take your arms down. Come on, head come up. On. Smile. Let's see some head you up. You guys got some dynamite smiles. Let's see that smile, Carla. Head okay. up. You know what? You've made a whole audience of friends here that only knowing you for an hour. That's going to be really proud of. Smile. Everybody likes you. Four principles I've learned from you to follow when you're getting bullied. Number one, avoid. What does that mean? Basically what we just went over. Avoid. Have, body, have correct body language. Um, learn to be cautious and observant, and say no to peer pressure. Avoid those situations that put you in a, in a situation to be bullied. The next thing is surprise. Basically what we want them to do at this time is to stand up to the bully. Say enough is enough. Stand up to him and say, leave me alone. What is a street smart stance for people who don't live in New York? <laughs> Well, basically, what we want to do is we want them to keep them out of your personal space. We don't want them to get close enough to hurt you physically. So when you see a bully coming after you or so forth, we have you take uh, what we call a street smart stance. Show me. Basically, all we do is, let's say, come here, Adam, get up here and help me. <laughs> Big Adam here is bullying me. What I'm going to do is I see him coming. I don't want to let him get close enough to kick me because then he can hurt me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just step back with one foot like this. I'm going to hold a hand up like this. And I'm going to say, hey, leave me alone. I don't want anything from you. This, see, if he Can does, I see both of you do this, please? Come on. Get up, up on your tootsies. Come on. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up. Get up. Get up. up on your tootsies. Put your hand up. See what this does is say, hey, you don't want him to get close now? Come on, get up. No, hand no. up like this. Move hand side. up like this. Put this foot back. Come on. Enough. Hey, leave me alone. You want to look me right in the eye when you're in that street smart stance because eye contact sends power, a message of power. The right message you want to say. So if I'm bullying you, look me right in the eye, Adam. <laughs> say, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> now, I noticed something. You, now you're giving me eye contact. I had trouble the whole part of the show. So let's watch me as I walk toward you. Both of you. Can you stand? See? Now. <laughs> it's a little bit much, but that's okay. Let's see. A lot of eye contact. So we've got the uh, street smart stance. Don't take your eyes off the person. And firm voice when speaking. Problem with both of you. For, I didn't hear a firm voice. What about hello, Sally, with a firm voice? <laughs> Hello, Carla. <laughs> Hello, Sally. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Hello, Sally. There you go. Yeah. We'll be right back. While Adam was here in New York, I secretly sent a member of my staff back to his hometown to set up a big surprise so that it would be waiting for Adam when he got home. Sally, I can't wait to see where you're taking me. I'm so nervous and excited. Bye-bye. I can't wait for my surprise. I've been blindfolded for like a minute now. I hope it's good. Guys, move it. Follow me. 
What do you think? Is this mine? Was that yours? What, could you use one of those? Yeah. Thank you, Sally, and I want to say thank you to the fitness experience for giving me this wonderful machine so I can lose weight. And I'm, I'm going to keep you guys posted on how I'm doing. Carla's mom told us that Carla no longer talks about wanting to kill herself, and her grades have improved. When the other kids found out that Carla was brave enough to confront Samantha on the show, they came forward to reveal that they too had been bullied. Since then, Samantha has stopped being a bully, and the kids have now joined together in a support group so that everyone can get along. Jackie and her mom Judy told us that Crystal has not stopped bullying Jackie, and they are hiring an attorney and filing police reports. Judy showed the Bully Smarts tape to her local authorities, and they're working to start a Bully Smarts program in their town. Adam loves working out on his new treadmill and is trying to lose weight. He's going to spend the summer with his family in Poland and says he may want to stay there if the kids at school don't stop bullying him. See you next time.